the Lord family. God bless you. What a great privilege to meet again this afternoon to spend time in the Word and to pray. It's always a great joy to have all of you come join me. There is so much power when we come together as God's people to get into the Word, receive the power of the Word, and then enter into prayer. There is something powerful that happens in our life. Listen to me, child of God, you are powerfully anointed to pray to have results. But I must also tell you that there is a whole, a, a whole new level you and I will come to when we join our faith together. Listen, when you and I come together as God's children, God's people, and we join our faith together, and we stand upon the power in the word, we send some demons running. We send principalities running. We send powers of darkness running. And that is what is going to happen this afternoon as you and I join our faith together and stand upon the word of God and begin to pray. Some demons that have been depressing you are going to be sent running. Some demons that are after your marriage and seeking divorce are going to be sent running. Some demons that are manifesting in your working environment are going to be sent running. There is victory for you and I this afternoon as we come together to pray. Bible says you will put to flight a thousand. But when you join your faith with me, Bible says it suddenly become a power of 10,000 people. And that is what is getting ready to erupt here this afternoon as we join our faith together. Why don't you take a minute and share this page? Copy the link. Invite somebody. Put it somewhere on your social uh, network you know, post the link on a platform where you belong. Let us use what is about to happen here as a tool of reaching out. I tell you, there is somebody out there that needs to hear what is happening here. There is somebody out there that needs a breakthrough. And the prayer happening here right now will be the key to their breakthrough. So don't deny them. Take a minute and share this page as we get right into the Word. Listen, this week is dedicated to prayer. This week is dedicated to having breakthroughs and releases in our lives. And listen to me, child of God, I don't know what you've been praying about. That seems not to change. That season of change is right here. It's upon you. That change is right here. And I want you to release your faith. Yesterday, we began uh, on talking about things we need to do to have our prayers answered. And yesterday, we spent a good amount of time talking about praying the will of God. You know, it's not just praying because you have time to pray. It's not just praying because you have a need that you feel you got to pray about. Bible says anyone that seek will find. Anyone that knocks, the door will be open unto them. But there is a way to seek. There is a way to knock. There is a way by which when you seek, you knock doors must be open and that which is lost must be found. But the question is that sometimes we go seeking, we go knocking on any door we feel like knocking. I tell you there are some doors in America, if you go knocking, some people will come out and shoot you. Think about that. You don't just jump into any home and knock on the door at any odd hour in the night thinking that, you know, yeah, I'm knocking because I need some help. I need some. Sometimes we got to be careful. Whose door we knocking? There are certain doors we are knocking that do not hold our breakthrough. My question to you this afternoon is that what door are you knocking on? Does the door you are knocking on have your blessing? The door you are knocking on, does it have your breakthrough? Yesterday we prayed the word of God. And the word of God says we must pray the will of God. Even when Paul was talking about visiting the churches in Rome, as we read yesterday, he says, I'm praying that some way, somehow, I will find the will of God in coming to you. And that is why Jesus is our perfect model. When he was confronted with death on the cross, the most shameful death, it, it was so painful, so shameful, so disgraceful. He said, Father, I pray that you will let this cup pass over me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Prayers that are answered are prayers that are in conformity to the will of God. In the midst of your desperation for a change, do you take the time off to find out what is the will of God concerning this situation with my health? 
In the midst of all that I'm going through, what is the will of God concerning my finances? What is the will of God? Some of you are praying for a green card. But the only reason why God has kept that green card for a couple of years is because he knows how much you will begin to travel like crazy and lose on your focus when he gives you that green card. So God holds it for a season and build stability in you, build focus in you, build your future in you and suddenly releases it to you. Listen, God knows the perfect time for you. God knows the right time and that is why we don't pray until we know the will of God and the will of God is hidden in his word. I never pray without reading the word. Jesus said, he said, watch and pray. What is it that we watch? We watch the word and then we begin to pray. Bible says he watches over what? His word. Anytime I hear God say watch, he's talking about his word. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, I will stand upon my watch and see what he will say unto me. When I stand on the word, when I meditate on the word, when I pray on the word, when I speak the word, when I pursue my career, my destiny based on the word, that is when I begin to hear that which God is saying. Listen to me, John makes it very clear. In John chapter 1, Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among men. Men beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten. But I love what he says next. He said there was nothing that was made that was made without the word. And that is the reason why God has elevated this word of his above himself. It means God is beneath his own word. It means God will not do anything outside of his word. It means God has even submitted himself under his word. It means whatever you are asking God to do, it must be in conformity to his word that he himself is subjected onto. God is not subjected to do anything outside his word. So you must find out what is God conce saying concerning my marriage? What is God saying concerning my finances? Before you start asking him, because God will not do anything that is not in the word. Listen to me, children of God. This is the reason why a lot of people are deceived. Bible talks about the last days. Bible says even the very elect will be deceived. Why? Because we are not ready to get into the word. A lot of people are lied to. And the reason why they are lied to is because they won't study the word. They won't go into the word to find out what the word is saying. So they are ready and, and going after all kinds of lies and doctrines of men which are not in conformity to the word. What you are trying to do, what you are seeking to do, is it in conformity to the word of God? The word of God must be our standard. And this afternoon, I want to bring you one more key you need to have prayers that yield results. Yesterday, we spoke about praying in line with the will of God. Praying in conformity. Our prayer must harmonize with the word of God. Praise God. But today, I want to talk about prayer that is mixed up with faith. I love one man that came to Jesus for a miracle, for a breakthrough. And he lacked faith. But Jesus looked at him and said, Do you believe that with God all things are possible? Do you believe that that which you are asking for right now, God can do it? And he made two statements that is so powerful. He said, I believe but help my unbelief. A good number of you listening to me right now are believers. But deep inside your heart, there are certain things going on in your life that you just can't believe that God will come through for you. I believe. Help my own belief. That might be your situation this afternoon. I believe that God is watching over the lives of my children. But Lord, help me to believe that where and how deep my kids have gone in their drug addiction, you could get them out. Sometimes the enemy will flash to you people whose lives have been wasted. Children that have lost their purpose and their focus. And for a moment you doubt whether God would ever save your children. I believe, but help my unbelief. That might be your situation. 
The doctors are saying these are your diagnosis yet. Sometimes you read the word of God and the word of God says that healing is the bread of the children. You read the book of Isaiah and Isaiah is prophesying into your life that by his stripes you are healed. And sometimes when you read the symptoms of the diseases, you are made to feel that, you know what, this might be the way I might be taken out. No, you are not going to die. I want to speak into your life this afternoon. It is not time to die. It is time to live. Bible says, I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the works of God. You see, when you come praying to God and your prayer is in line with the word of God, you know what happens? God would either cancel a catastrophe or he would suspend it. We saw it in the life of Hezekiah. The moment he got the word of God, understand it was the word of God from the prophet that he should prepare his home and die. He turned right away after receiving the word. What you do immediately after receiving the word is key. He turned to the wall and began to pray to God and say, God, you have said I will not die. And you know many things God has said concerning your life. He said, with long life will I satisfy you. So while you sit down, pity party and cry and feel it is time to you for you to die, you are not going to die. I speak life into you this afternoon. That sickness is not unto death. That diabetes is not unto death, that arthritis is not unto death, that hypertension is not unto death, that condition, that cancer, whether it is stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, whatever stage it is, there is power in the stripes of Jesus to bring life to you. Think and hold on to the word of God. Faith must be mixed up. I, I believe faith is rising up in you because Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. I want your faith to build up and get the word of God that says with long life would I satisfy you. That is the word of God. And so you want to hold on to that word above what the doctors are telling you. You want to hold on to that word of God above what your finances tells you. You want to hold on to the word of God that says I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper you want to hold on to that word above what the doctors are saying above what your bank statement say above what your credit report is saying you want to hold on to the word of God in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 where God says I am the God that giveth thee power to make wealth it looks like all the blessings of God that came into your life, coronavirus has eroded it all. But you want to hold on to the word of God that says that whatsoever the Lord maketh shall be forever. You want to hold on to the word of God that says that God maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. So you will not be filled with sorrow in this season. You want to hold on to the promises of God, child of God. I want to read a scripture to you this afternoon as we get ready to pray. Because your faith must be released. Beside you praying the will of God, you must mix your prayer with faith. Believe that a thing you are asking God is able to do it. Look at what Jesus says in the book of Matthew, chapter 21 and verse 20 through 22. And this, the backdrop of this story is Jesus speaks to a tree. The next time they came around the following day, the tree had died to its core, its root. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? It was so quick. 24 hour miracle is coming your way. 24 hours change can happen if you believe the word of God. They came in and within 24 hours, the tree was dead to the core. And they said, how could this happen so soon? How did a fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, if you have faith... And do not doubt. I want you to release your faith this afternoon as we get ready to pray. He says, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what I have done or what was done to this fig tree, but also you will say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. What is it that you are believing God for? What is it you are asking God for this afternoon with me? Listen, I'm joining my faith with yours. 
And he says, you can tell that mountain. That situation could be a mountain situation. Your marriage situation right now could be a, a mountain situation. The confusion in your marriage could be a mountain situation. Some of you are under demonic attack, demonic oppression. As we pray this afternoon, we release our faith. He said, whatsoever the situation might be, it could be a mountain situation of a finance. It could be a financial mountain, an emotional mountain, a mountain of sickness in your body. As we pray this afternoon, I speak to those mountains to be removed out of your life. He said, you will tell that mountain be removed and cast into the sea. Some mountains are being casted out of your life right now. Financial mountains, I address them this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. Mountains of death, I declare that God is bringing financial breakthrough that will wipe away all these financial mountains in your life. Mountains of debt, mountains of loans, mountains of credit card. God is opening doors in your finances, in your workplace, in your business to bring financial resources that will take care of all these debt. God is releasing your kinsman redeemer. He's releasing a Boaz for you and you will come out of debt. That which seems to be a mountain that is insurmountable. You are leaping over walls. You are leaping over mountains. You are hopping and jumping and celebrating the goodness of God. Somebody listening to me right now. Healing is coming to you. Deliverance is coming to you. Some of you are under the oppression of the enemy. The enemy will not allow you to have your peace. But the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding is coming into your home. It's coming under your roof. You will experience peace in your working environment. Some of you are so afraid to go to work on Monday. Some of you are scared when the thought of work comes. You are scared of your bosses. Bible says you will not be afraid of their faces because God says, I will make your face like a fling stone. I speak the glory of God upon you. I speak the anointing of God upon you. I speak the oil of favor upon you. Wherever you are listening to me right now, I see the favor of God coming upon you right now. You see, Bible says when a man's ways please the Lord, he causes his enemies to be at peace with him. And so I pray that there shall be peace within your walls. Those that have risen up against you, I declare that God is giving you victory over them. Those that have risen up against you in your family, I declare that God is bringing you into peace and into alignment with his will for your life in the mighty name of Jesus. This will be your season of joy. I declare that this will be your season of peace. This will be your season of upliftment in your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God, family. This is our season. Doors are opening changes here. God is bringing breakthroughs to us from the north, from the south, east and west. Wherever you are turning to, as the Lord leads you, I want you to know with your faith release, your doors are opening. Doors that were shut are opening right now. Your favors are coming. Places that held your blessings, I declare those places are letting go of your blessings. And it is your moment. Your moment is right. Your moment is now. Take it by faith. What you are seeking of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory and honor to his name. Family, keep praying. Keep releasing your faith. Keep praying according to the will of God. Keep standing upon the foundation of the word and pray and bring your request unto God. And I want you to know this is your season. You will have a testimony to bring to the glory of God. I want you to type in that comment box, I'm breaking through on every side. That is your statement of faith. I'm breaking through on every side. I want you to type it out boldly in caps. Say, I'm breaking through on every side. Wherever I tend to is breakthrough, breakthrough. It doesn't matter which direction I tend to as the Lord leads me. Breakthrough. Some of you may just type in breakthrough. It's a season of breakthrough. I feel it in the anointing right now. Glory to God. Child of God. Tomorrow, I want you to get ready because God is taking us to a whole new level. I want you to get ready as we take this week as a week of prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know I love you. I look forward to connecting with you tomorrow, same time, 12 o'clock on our midday connection. Until then, tomorrow, I want you to know God is on your side. 
Grace and peace to you. Shalom. The church world today is confronted with a situation that is no different from what is recorded throughout scriptures. From the days of Moses, he was confronted with leadership crisis and it was so serious he had to appoint leaders who would join him to govern Israel. You see, the ministry can no longer afford to have members that just shows up week after week. And so this is the goal. The goal is straightforward. Recruit, equip, and deploy. And this program is designed just to solve this problem and to equip your team and prepare them ready for this new dispensation. Apostle William Childers is leading the charge in developing cutting edge leaders. Serving the spirit of greatness reveals how horizontal and vertical relationship undergirds all great leadership. Apostle Shalders provides insight to how the infusion of life experiences, personal gifting, and our individual culture is foundational to the development of authentic leadership that will meet the demands and needs of today's people. We have entered into the world called the virtual world, and it's a world that seems to be unknown to many. Today we have virtual weddings. We're going to have virtual church plant, which is going to be one of the big things that is getting ready to erupt. The question is, is the church ready for this? You know, Love Legacy Academy is a ministry intended to equip leadership with greater skill sets to disciple and to lead God's people. No matter what level of leadership you're on, no matter where you're at in your calling, come to training. Come to be trained. There's nothing sweeter than being in fellowship with those who are intended to hear and to obey the voice of God. So these two courses are designed with your team in mind. We have the certified church worker and the certified coach. Now the certified church worker is to ensure that each member of your team is equipped. So to be certified means they are equipped to do the work they are called to do. And so we have three courses built into this certification program. The first one is discovering your ministry. The second one is the serving ministry. And of course, the third one is to ensure that every member of your team fits into the team. It is called teamwork. And so we want to make sure that your team is equipped with these tools and by so doing become certified to do that which they are called to do. The second program is called the Certified Coach. A coach is a shepherd. A coach is somebody that takes care of others. We want to make sure that this whole certification program is not just a piece of paper, but your team is truly equipped with the tools they need to the degree that everybody on your team practices what is being taught in these training programs. We want to make sure that it's not just an event, but it becomes a culture in your ministry where everybody is equipped and deployed to do the work of the ministry. So I hope you would consider to enroll your entire team on this great certification program that will prepare them for this great harvest of the kingdom of God.